welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 106. This episode is with Mia Davis, who is just a delight. Every now and then you'll come across somebody and you just connect, you know what I mean? Like you find your tribe, you find your people, and uh, Mia and I are definitely uh, of the same ilk. She's so inspiring. Uh, it was just great. It was so great uh, to chat with her. We talked about how she is from Detroit, and believe it or not, she made me want to go to Detroit. Um, I didn't really have an opinion beforehand, but now I'm like, wow, I really need to go to Detroit. She made it sound so cool with art and music and food and just, wow. And uh, we go over, you know, common misconceptions and stuff like that. We talked about what inspired her to start acting in high school, uh, how speech class actually was the was the beginning of her journey. We talk about studying in London at the Globe, you know, Shakespeare's Theater. She learned acting there. Crazy. We talk about finding fulfillment in the pursuit of the dream, separating yourself from the work, and, of course, Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, Mia Davis was Tilly Jackson, an amazing character for, I mean, really an amazing actor, honestly. Uh, we talk about how uh, her son is actually in the game. He's got a little cameo, so check that out. And then uh, the lengths that they had to go to uh, to keep their involvement secret until the release of the game. Uh, it's just great. It's great. Mia's great. You guys are going to love it. Uh, so let's just get right to it. Please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 106 with Mia Davis. Theme song time. Skype is so weird because I feel like when you sign up for it, it makes like three accounts for you for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I'm always like, no, I, I'm I'm Brian Balance. And then there's like <laughs> eight of me. I'm like, what is happening? So <laughs> it's so weird. But how's your day going? It's going good. Yeah, it's going good. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. it did, did it snow where you were? Because Twitter's full of snow today. No, it was just kind of rainy today in uh on the East Coast in Jersey. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's just been rainy in, in New York and Jersey for like three days straight, which yeah. is not bad because the weather is still kind of nice, which is like the 60s. Oh, that sounds awesome. Compared to wintertime, which no one wants. I mean, I'll take yeah. it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. I'm in Florida, so we don't get winter. What? Like, yeah, ever. It doesn't even get cold here. Are and you I, serious? Yeah, like ever. We had, we had a week of winter, like, let me think, maybe... Four years ago, or something. Are you serious? Yeah, I, no joke. I well, I've traveled a lot, so I was about to say I haven't been cold in four years. That's not true. I haven't been cold in Florida in years. It's just wow. it's just hot all the time and humid. Humid's where it really gets you. You know, it's just yeah, ugh. yeah. Oh, it's the worst. Sixty Gosh. sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll I'll take some of that. But also snow. <laughs> Snow's cold. Snow's really cold. Snow is very, very cold. Yeah, I'm from originally uh, Detroit, Michigan, so I know oh. all about But I also Ooh. know all about all the seasons because we do have true seasons like winter, fall, spring, summer. They all have their own place. Wow. Like New York and New Jersey is kind of like spring, summer, fall. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then winter. Sure. And spring, summer, fall, and then winter. Like, yeah. The the winter is <laughs> the one that kind of sticks around for a little while. Yeah, the winter is the only one that's really prominent. Everything else is just kind of like it's really hot today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, well, it is June, so that makes sense. Oh, it's cold. Well, it is July. Like what? Sure. Yeah. You've got it goes literally by the months. It's like the mm -hmm. second it's the first, it's like okay, boom, cold. Mm -hmm. Yep. Whew. I went to New York for the first time this year. And it was in maybe, I, I got to remember these dates. My memory's so bad at it. Maybe April, March or April, something like that. There was snow all over Central Park. That's what I did. Yep. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's it's funny because my only experience with New York is cold. So yeah. I hear about like, you know, the really hot summers and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, it does happen there. It's really, it is, it's a really, New York is really nice in the summertime. Now the subway train <laughs> is not nice in the summertime. Sure. The platform is not nice. That underground air. Oh. 
thick like molasses, friend. Ugh. Like it is thick, and the smell, the stench is like baking, heating up. Oh, it's like Florida. It. <laughs> you just have to sit in it to wait for your train. <laughs> oh my god, that's you know what. I could not figure it out, the subway system. It's so weird. It's like if you want to go one way, you got to go back out and then over to the other entrance to the same subway section. It's very confusing. Yeah, some you have to know like where the hubs are or where, I guess, where you can walk across the platform or underneath the, the actual tracks to get to the other side because sometimes you do have to like exit the turnstiles and then go up across the street and then come back down and pay again to come through the turnstile which sucks and if you don't know exactly where you can go to like avoid that charge then yeah it does suck but once you get the hang of it once you know what color goes where right in relation to like where you want to go in the city in manhattan in brooklyn and queens then it's super easy and what trains connect and cross over super easy like once you get the hang of it it's just like yeah, yeah yeah i'm going i'm I'm going, I'm taking the one train up and then I'll get it. I'll catch it at 59. Like, it's so easy. Sure. Like, it, yeah. How long did it take you to figure it out? Um, let's see. Four years. No. <laughs> maybe like, maybe I'll say until I got really good. But I was also doing the same pattern. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Because I used to babysit back in 2012. I used to babysit with this family. Nice. And... Once I got my pattern down, I was like, oh, I hop on this train, I get off, wait for the express, and then go up and then get off three stops. Like, it was super easy. Sure. Um, I think maybe like a month, because then I started to like go out with friends and stuff that lived in the city. And so I would make myself like take different trains. So that way I could know which one's connected, where they're going, what's like, what street means you're going uptown, what street means you're going downtown. Like, I just had to learn. It, I think it was like a month or two. I think a month or two. That's fair. That's a good amount yeah. of time. It's it's yeah. complicated. There's a lot of different lines. And, and yeah, it's not like you can just take this train going one way and this train going the other way from the same section. If you're no. in the wrong place, you got to go around and, huh, yeah, yeah. it's mm-hmm. overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you said you're from Detroit. That's cool. Yeah. That's cold. Detroit gets real cold. Yeah, Detroit gets really cold. Ooh. Like, yeah, sometimes here they'll have like a uh, snow days and stuff. And uh-huh. I just like look outside. Like these kids are so <laughs> yeah. privileged. Like, are you right? This is a snow day. I remember being in like first or second grade, and there was literally snow higher than me. What? And we st- and school was not closed. What? Like, it's just like. Yeah, like, even the universities, like, I know Michigan State and U of M, like, do not have snow days. Like, they have them if it's, like, state of emergency for real. But in Michigan, um, state of emergency does not happen for real. (laughs) How bad do you want the schooling? (laughs) Like, my car won't start. Like, (laughs) Oh, it's like, better get walking, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, well, go walk. The buses aren't running. Well, the school's still open. You have a test today. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Pull out your dogs and sled. Do yeah, what you have to do. <laughs> Michigan does get really cold. Um, oh, but it man. gets really hot, too. People are surprised, but because we're surrounded by the lakes, we get a lot of humidity. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, with the water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of humidity in the summertime. Like, it's, I, when I say we get true seasons, like, I've never, and I think Midwest <laughs> in general, gets, like, really good, good seasons. Nice. You get the yeah. extremes of them all, which I yeah, guess is, I guess is nice. I mean, fall is beautiful because the trees are like all these different colors, and then spring is nice because it is a little bit like chilled, but not too cold, not too hot. Does rain a lot, but I mean that's spring, right? Like right. spring is supposed to be rainy. True. It doesn't like switch drastically like here. The, the yeah, I've gotten sick here more than I used to get sick back in Michigan. Really? That's <laughs> Just so it's funny. Like hot, and then the next day it's fifty-two degrees. Like what? Sure, yeah, <laughs> you can't really acclimate. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Here we have like the massive humidity, and then you walk into a building and it's like ice cold AC. Yeah, so. what's up with that? Like, why are people doing that? I don't, I don't know. We're, we're just trying to survive, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's a, it's a, when you have to swim through the air, it's it's a little tough sometimes. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Man. I So I've not been to Detroit. It does have my favorite airport, though. I'm, yeah, DTW. I'm a big fan of DTW because that tram. You had a lot of layovers. Yes. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just the the train alone is what makes it worth it for me. You're like, oh, there's a hundred gates, but you don't have to walk it. There's a train. Yeah. I'm like, that's what I'm talking <laughs> you can about. Get on the air tram and go from one end to the other. <laughs> yeah. Let's have those in every airport. So I have a good uh, yeah. I have a good view of Detroit. As far as the airport goes, <laughs> <laughs> the city itself is amazing. I mean, yeah, I'm from there, so of course I will always think that. But, of course, yeah. Talk to me. Um, what, what common it, misconceptions? I know nothing about Detroit. Well, the misconception is that it's scary and it's and it's the murder city. And I mean, sure, like every place has its bad yeah, areas. Of course. Um, I was from there. I was never hurt. So there you go. I, I knew exactly where to go, not where to go. That's the key. Um, but it does have this like rising art scene going on where it's just oh. like underground music, underground artists, underground um, singers. Like, that's it's, cool. It's like this pod right now of like fresh things happening, which is really, really awesome because I mean, you have Motown there and like some right. of the greats are from there. So it makes sense that the city is like vibrant with music and art and, and everyone is like, and like the younger, like, I don't even know what generation this is. Me neither. Like not younger than me, but like mine, which is like, is it X? No, Z? No. It's uh, it, I, we're probably at numbers by now, right? <laughs> well, I think I. Well, I wouldn't even know. I really. <laughs> yeah, it's something. Like, I don't what? know. But anyway, my like age range, which is like late eighties, early nineties babies. Yeah. Right. Mine too. Like the pod is like. That's who is like pulsing the city right now, which is awesome. Cool. Every time I go, back, I'm always like, there's always like these art things going on, these exhibits, um, these like underground concerts, um, just like a lot, a lot of stuff is going on. And I really want people to like view and get a chance to go see that stuff and hear that stuff because it's it just has the heart of Detroit in it. Yeah. Um, and it's like a melting pot, which is like all these different types of people from everywhere. I mean. Like Dearborn, Dearborn, Michigan is like the biggest um, Middle Eastern community in America. Oh, cool. And it's like right outside of Detroit. It's like literally next door to Detroit. So it's like they are there. And then there's a big uh, Jewish community. And then there's a big Italian community. Like people don't even know about that. But yeah. like they live and reside in the city and on the outskirts of the city, which is awesome. So you have this all this culture, these different foods and, and just activities and stuff that are really, really dope, and are really, I hate that people haven't got a chance to visit, or, like, hear about that in Detroit, because you do hear about, like, the bad politics going on, and right. and the foreclosures of property, and blah, 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 and, like, all that negative stuff, but sure. through that, it's like a phoenix rising from the ashes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> you know talking what I mean? about. Um, and I feel like, just because I'm from there, I also have that, like, spirit in me, you know, just, like, sure, do it, no matter what the outcome is, or no matter what the circumstance is right now, just kind of, like, go forth, and, like, definitely Detroit is always just going forth, so, yeah, that's a misconception, go to Detroit, everybody. (laughs) That's cool, I mean, not gonna lie, I kind of want to go to Detroit now. I (laughs) They have some good food. Oh, yeah, talk to me. place for food. Recommendations, what do we got? I mean, I like food. If you're from Detroit, there is a chain. It's not really a chain. It's just a restaurant called Coney Island. Now, people here oh. in, New York, in New Jersey are like, oh, Coney Island, like the place you go for the roller coasters. And I'm yeah. like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you're like the real Coney, Coney Island. Coney Island <laughs> is a restaurant, but it's like oh. a million of them. And they're all different names, but they all have the Coney Island, like, what? former title. Um, and it basically is like, I guess it's kind of like the diner that you would get like anywhere else, but it's way better than a diner. Okay. You can get good, good food, like a Coney dog, which is like a hot dog with chili on it and then cheese and then onions and mustard and ketchup. I'm in. And then they have like chili cheese fries, which is the same thing, just without the hot dog, but with oh. the fries. And then, like, a grilled chicken peat. I'm getting hungry. Just oh, my about. God. You're speaking my <laughs> language here. <laughs> like, when am I going back home? When am I going back home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but they have a lot of, like, new food places, which is, like, um, they have a lot of vegan spots now, which is awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah, there is a place called Detroit uh, Vegan Soul. I like it. And it's literally soul food, which is, like, fried chicken. But it's not fried chicken, which oh. is like macaroni, baked macaroni and cheese, yams. But it's not like real cheese. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. vegan 
fried catfish sandwich, but it's not catfish. Like it's, it is so good. It is really? so good. Oh, oh man, so I'm writing this down. Coney Island. There's like there's not a lot of that's... a lot of places. Um, a place called Sweetwater has really good wings. Like I just I just know like what I like from each place. Sure, you know? sure. You got your list. <laughs> I got my list where I get my stuff, like a good corned beef sandwich. Oh. Gosh. <laughs> See, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Detroit. I love that when especially like when artists come from places that are generally kind of tough, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cuz mm-hmm. like the best art comes from struggle. You Absolutely. know what I mean? And that's really cool. Is it kind of yeah. do you feel kind of weird now that like I feel like we're probably in the same age range that we're kind of the adults now? I mean, really, It's a little I, weird, right? I have a kid and I'm always like, "Who?" Like, yeah. It's like, so weird. I had a kid ask so me loud. if he can go into the room the other day, and I was like, I don't know. Ask an adult. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so weird. <laughs> I think I'm still in, like, my pubescent age. Yes. Where I'm, like, listening to Evanescence in the room. You Thank know you. What I mean? like, right? You're like, wake me up inside. Wow, wow. <laughs> still little bow wow. Like, wow. Right? <laughs> I still, it's like, I understand. Yeah, parents don't understand. I, I'm, I'm on board. I'm, I'm there. I, I, that's, yeah, I just, I still can't believe sometimes. And I also think that, 20 years ago is 1980 like uh, what yeah yeah i hear you i hear you i'm like, I, I was born in 91 and i'm like oh oh i'm yeah, almost see, I, i'm I almost born 30. in 90 oh and i'm just like 30 like 30 years ago is still in my brain like the 70s like yeah like, yeah same no, it's actually the 90s like, oh no <laughs> we're getting older <laughs> Send help. <laughs> send help send help oh my god it's yeah, so I weird guess time such an interesting thing <laughs> yeah for real <laughs> adulthood who signed up for this oh Not my god me. no one that's the no pr- one. that's the big joke it just happens I, I had um this is funny but i had saw something on instagram that was hilarious to me uh-huh. it was like adult it was like rec- or adulthood would not recommend it is very ghetto <laughs> like <laughs> i mean it's true it is not what you think at all it's like, I feel my sentiments exactly. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> it's the greatest irony as a kid. You're like, I just want to be a grown up. And now you're like, it's the worst. Up. It's like, I don't know what I thought being a grown up was. Like, you get to do whatever you want, which I guess to an extent is kind of true. But sure. some of those things lend you in jail. So you're like, ah, <laughs> can't even do that. <laughs> also, most of those things cost money. Yes. Like- <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the things I want to do, I'm like, I should have just been happy playing in my room as a kid. Yeah. Because this right here, I have to go out with friends. I have to spend 50 bucks so, yep. for one night. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. If only we knew. If only we knew. Oh, our our so. friends were free back then, you know? Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, do I want to eat or socialize? <laughs> uh, can't do both anymore. Ain't happening. <laughs> no, you can't. No, no. My Decisions. goodness. <laughs> She, I. That's pretty interesting as well. Like you talk about Detroit, it kind of reminds me of like Chicago. You know what I mean? Because everyone only hears about the bad things about Chicago, but then you're like, it has a super vibrant like art Absolutely. scene, and some of the Absolutely. best actors come from there. And you're like, what? Exactly. Yeah, and their theater scene, and even their uh, film and TV scene has like amplified so much that a lot of things are being shot there. I mean, Chicago PD, Chicago Med, like yeah, the shy. The shy, like those huge, huge shows are in Chicago and it's just so good. And the theater scene in Chicago is awesome as well. Like regional theater in Chicago is really, really good. Oh yeah. Um, Hamilton. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I, I haven't been able to actually like work in Chicago, but yet I feel like this. Yeah. Yet. Um, (laughs) I feel like the, the two things that are happening, which is like music and and TV stuff and film stuff and and like industry things, I just feel like it's such a time for that. Again, like yep. just the generation of now of who we are is just like, mm, actually, it's been pretty whack. So yeah. we're going to come <laughs> through and like tear some stuff up. Hell yeah. Some things, and then, you know, and then here we're put on for our city like this is what it is. And I love that, and I and I've seen that, and I hope that that continues to like triple its way to Detroit because Chicago and Detroit are sister cities. Yeah. So like, Chicago has a way more um, booming, I will say, like downtown area and like metro metro metropolis area sure. than Detroit does, just because Detroit is still like revamping a little bit more in in terms of that. 
but it's so good to see like another Midwest city like rising. Yeah. So, yeah. I have a lot of friends who actually went to high school with me in Detroit. Shout out Cast Tech High. Hey. Um, <laughs> and then who went away for school and then eventually moved back, but didn't move back to Detroit, but in turn moved to Chicago because it does have that same vibe. Sure. But they love it there. They love it there. And I think that's so awesome. I'm into it. I'm into yeah. it. So then when did your interest in acting start? So I want to say it definitely was in high school. Uh, okay. My brother, my uh, brother right above me, he is an actor and he's always been oh, like, cool. in acting. Just like when we were younger, like I would have, I would help him as I was learning to read as a kid. My mom didn't want to, she's like, you know what? Ask your sister to help you because she needs to learn how to read. <laughs> so I would be like his person that he would read scripts with to he, so he could memorize. Oh, right on. So I knew about it and like, it was just like, oh, okay, this is what he does. And I was, I was deathly shy. No really? Ever, my family knows this, but I used to cry. Like if we had like <laughs> Easter programs at church, I would be like weeping if I had to say like a sentence in front of people. Right. I was deathly shy. Like. You, had, you were also like, method. I was also, <laughs> because we're talking about Easter, right? Yeah. So clearly, I need to be crying anyway. Yeah. Um, Respect. But no, it was like it was an issue. It was like a really bad thing. Even in school, I was just like, I can't, I can't. And then in high school, um, my brother, I ended up going to the same high school that my brother went to, and it was a it was a curriculum based high school. So our high school, Cast Tech, is had like all these different curriculums, like business. English language and then they had performing arts and so my brother was in performing arts and we have this drama teacher uh, Marilyn McCormick and she like has bred and like produced some of the most amazing actors that are out in the world now yeah um, like actors writers producers everything um, a couple of people on I don't know if you watch the show Snowfall but like someone that when I was in high school with Angela Lewis she's uh, auntie on Snowfall, and then like, uh, uh, what's his name? Marcus from Scandal, Cornelius Smith Jr. is like, just like, and we have like somebody who just wrote a Broadway production what? of The Temptations. Like, it's nuts. That's so and they cool. all come from the same high school. Um, and so when I got there, I was like, okay, well, I have to be in performing arts because I don't want to be in anything else. And I think I want to be a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <Question> <laughs> Might as well pick the easier yeah, one. Yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> Um, and she sat me down. It was like the second week of ninth grade. And I remember her like getting me in front of the speech class because you had to take speech class if you were in performing arts, which was like, I was like, okay, so shoot me in the face. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she sat me down before we had to like present and like do whatever. And she's like, what do you want to be? And I was like, a lawyer. <laughs> right and away. She, like, looked at me with like this look of like, okay, sis, sure. And I was like, yeah, I want to be a lawyer. And she's like, why do you want to be a lawyer? And I literally had no idea. I think, <laughs> like, they make a lot of money, I heard. Like, right. You're like, I'm good at arguing. Um. <laughs> um, but am I? Because I'm, like, a shy yeah. person. Like, well, I do well. No. Yeah. Um, and she's like, you're not going to be a lawyer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay. She was like, you're going to be an artist. Like wow, she just knew. I can see it. You're going to be an artist. And I was like, uh, I can't draw, so. <laughs> <What laughs> she Madame zaroni to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and through her speech class, I became more and more, like, aware of my power as a person, aware nice. of my voice, aware of my art, my gift, through speech class. And then I, like, joined really? a performing arts group that we had. And we'd put on, like, funny, like, satire shows, like SNL. Like, it was... And it was so good. And we, like, create our own, like, pieces. And production-wise, we did everything. Lights, costume, everything. Like, we created our art. Dude. And through that, I, like, found, like, wow. Okay. So I hadn't unleashed my voice yet. I hadn't unleashed my star yet because I had been, like, scared of it. I, I was afraid of what I could do. And then once I found it, I was like, I can't do anything else. <laughs> right, right. Just click. Nothing else makes sense. Yeah. Like, I can play a lawyer, but yeah. I won't be one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought I wanted to be one. But yeah, I just... I thought, but it was like, oh, no, 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 no. You just want to play one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. The stars <laughs> aligned. You're like, this yeah, makes yeah. sense. Like, this makes a lot more sense to me. And yeah. that's when I found it is 
when I was in that class. And then after that, like just making sure that the um, productions that we did in school and high school and stuff, I was like a part of and, and I got like lead roles in it. And then like senior year, we auditioned for um, conservatory schools, which are just like, again, curriculum based colleges and universities that circle circle around like graphic arts, uh, music, dance, theater. So oh, cool. um, there's this uh, thing called Unifieds that happens in Chicago, where all of these major, major conservatory schools across America come and even like internationally a couple of times come to this one hotel in Chicago and all of these theater kids just come and audition for these schools to get accepted into their roster. Oh, wow. And, and because my teacher was just like a legend in conservatory world, we always were just like lined up with, with conservatories that wanted to see who she was bringing that year. It's nice. And I remember my group auditioned for maybe like 10 or 11 schools. Normally people get to audition for like maybe three or four. Good Lord. But within the three days that we were there, we auditioned for 10 or 11 schools. And I remember I got into each and every one of them. Like Dude. as an artist. And I was like, okay, now I have to make a decision. And then through like process of elimination and like where I wanted my artistry to go and what I, I wanted to hone in on when I was in, you know, at college, sure. I decided to go to Rutgers, which is in New Jersey nice. um, Rutgers University. And they have this amazing program where we go to London our third year at Rutgers for the entire year. And we what? study at Shakespeare's Globe. Yeah. The Dude. entire year. We are students at Shakespeare's Globe in London. Yeah. Oh my God. Isn't that crazy? What? So like 19 year old me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> leaves America to go to London for an entire year to like immerse myself in the culture and immerse. And well, my, it was my class. It was like a class of, I think at that time we only had 12 or 13 what? students that were in my acting class. Mm-hmm. Dude. So it was just 13 American students going to London to study. And it was amazing. It was amazing. And it was like, you know that moment when you're, either when you look back at something or you have that like divine moment in, in the actual oh, yeah. moment where you're sitting there and just like, this is exactly what I was supposed to be doing. Oh, yes. Like, makes so much sense. 100%. I, I had that when I was there. Um, in London, I was like, this is exactly like my life has lined itself up exactly right. where I'm supposed to be to get what I'm supposed to get. Um, and it was just like a beautiful thing because, again, I did not want to be an actress. Like I did not. That wasn't in my cards at all. But here I am excelling by just like letting myself be. Um and I guess like I could, I could use this advice every day. Actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like to myself, just be Mia, just be. Um, right. But it was it was such a such a like, oh okay, okay, okay. God, I hear you. Like this is yeah, hundred yeah, percent. This is it. This is it. This is where this feels good. It feels relevant. It feels exciting. So this is this is it. Even like during the times where like school was hard, of course. And being a theater major, it was definitely hard. Like, sure, really, really hard. Um, but just like the the glimpses of keep going, this is it. Like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? Um, just solidified like the decision that I made, and then it solidifies even now when I'm like questioning, like, what the heck are you doing, sis? Yeah, you know, <laughs> there's no what? road. <laughs> yeah, like what is going on? There's no like pathway that i'm like oh this is how it looks because everyone's story is different like yep, yep. I, uh, there's no blueprint to this it's just do it don't get eaten by it but just go forth like do it i just feel like oh my gosh so yeah i never want to be an actress i figured that out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the art revealed itself to me <laughs> right uh, and then the rest is history and i've been doing it ever since Dude, it, your brain didn't want to be an actress, but you, you, your heart knew. It's like, like <laughs> yeah, my brain was crying for dear. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't, do <laughs> yeah. This is dangerous. It's only pain. <laughs> <laughs> my heart's like, use it for your artist. Exactly, exactly. That's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's true though. That no, that is a real thing. Like I believe that if you have, like, there's something. I don't know. It's almost like a spiritual thing. It's like a level that you mm -hmm. reach where it just connects and you're like, oh, it, it's fulfillment. 
You know what it's I mean? Fulfillment. That's yeah. the word, you know, because yeah. it's because it's like fulfillment is something that I feel, especially nowadays, is like really, really rare. Uh, Absolutely. But if you can find that thing that just, oh, this is this is where I'm the most fulfilled as like a being, you know. Right. And it's just like, yeah, exactly what you're saying. I know what you mean. Can't buy that. You it know can't. What I mean? Exactly. Can't buy that feeling. Exactly, and that's the type of feeling that like the money is irrelevant. Because yes. it's like you like I so that I explain it to people like because I the bells went off in my head when you said I was like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, yeah, like I remember. So I worked a day on uh, on uh. ballers and mm, so, I love that show. it's great. And I remember my first day there, it was like a 13 hour day and we never shot my scene. Mm. So I was like, OK, mm -hmm. so I remember the drive home. And I was calling my wife, and she's like, how you doing? I was like, well, you know, I'm doing okay. I was like, you know, I got paid today, but I don't feel good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was, mm -hmm. it was, It's that thing where you're like, I understand that the money's here, that you're just getting paid for your time. And some people, right. cool, if you do it for the money. But there's there's another thing, there's another lock inside of you that, like, is just there. Yeah. And then you just know. It just yes, clicks. absolutely. It just clicks. And you learn, at the Globe, we're acting. We're acting. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. You went to Shakespeare's like, house. <laughs> Shakespeare's house. We went to Stratford upon Abe. Like, just Dude. immensing. And again, I'm a little black girl from Detroit. Right. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, what is this life? Like, right. This doesn't, it doesn't equate in my natural mind, but like in my expansive spiritual mind. I'm just like, I, absolutely. Like, yeah. absolutely, you should be here. Absolutely, you should be learning the depths of language in art. And why writers write the way they do, you know, like yeah, all of that, and understanding Shakespeare in such a way that was like I could not. I mean, now yes, because I've already learned it. But like I remember in high school, we used to do Shakespeare for like English class, and I would just have the worst time because we were just reading it, we weren't acting it. Right, right. So I didn't know why I didn't like it, and it was because I wasn't doing it. I sure. was just reading it. But Makes I sense. know that I learned in a way that was like, no, no, I need to, can we get up? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can, can somebody come up here and like do it with me? Because I, I can't, I'm not understanding what you're saying, teacher friend. Like I need to get it another way. Right. But like being there and, and acting the words and like finding the intention of each character and like their objective in the scene and like stripping it down to the bare bones and then building the language back up. It was just like, Wow. If I can do this with Shakespeare, I can do this with any script because Shakespeare is hard. Yeah, it is hard, hard, hard. Because what language are y'all speaking? Like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's so true. We're reverent of it, but I was like, wait a second, hold on. Let's let's actually look at this. <laughs> <laughs> can I look at the spark notes, please? Like, <laughs> yeah. I know what I said, but like, what does it mean? <laughs> what, did, what did I just say? That's right. Um, but yeah, it was it was such a such an experience man it was such an experience and honestly I felt like the stories of like just Shakespearean text I understood deeper because of where I come from right a lot of that stuff is super deep and I was like I've seen this though like I know this behavior or I've seen this intention from somebody or like these character characteristics of like a Richard the third Nobody was like murdering anybody in front of him, right, yeah. but you know, like the sinister, like the sinister nature of him, and just like everything, I was like, I get this, I get it, right? I can get it now. It was amazing. If I could live in London, like for whatever amount of time, I would go back and live there. I actually did get a chance to go back in August. Oh yeah, how was it? <laughs> I, I, it. Yeah, that it was good. as beautiful as when I left it. Like, yeah. if not more. it waited for you. <laughs> uh, it waited nine years. Like, <laughs> it took me nine years to go back. And as I, when I got there, I was just like the flood of emotions of like my younger self was just like, your dreams, your dreams were so big, and you were thinking all of these things. And as I like walked, kind of like the path of how I used to walk to the globe to class every day from our flats that we had i kind of went the same little pathway oh nice and and i had like a, a moment of like wow i remember the dreams that i used to think walking to this building right i remember the thoughts that i would say like i want to be doing this and i want to be doing that and this and that and most of the things that i said i've ticked off my list yeah and and it was like 
it was reassuring for me, just like you are, as much as you don't think you aren't doing something, you are. Right. Things are, you manifested those things when you said them every single day while Absolutely. you were there. And now you can see when you look back your history of like what you've done and what you've accomplished and what you have yet to do because you have new goals. But like the, the matter of factness of like, no, I am doing consistent work. It might be slow, but I'm still pushing forward, you know? Right, right. It was like a forward momentum. As long as I'm going forward, I don't care how fast or slow it's going. I just want to always be in motion. I agree. I agree. And I had that moment when I was there in August and I was just like, and I like cried a little bit. Good. And <laughs> on the bridge, people were kind of like looking at me and I was just like, it's fine, guys. Like, yeah, listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm literally walking down memory lane. Give me a I'm minute. Li- literally <laughs> like. <laughs> That's amazing. I, You know what I also love is like, you're right. As long as you're moving forward and like, I feel like a lot of people get caught up in the process. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? They're like, yeah. they're like, it's a process. It's a process. I'm like, yeah, but don't look at it like a process. Just keep looking forward and start moving. And then when yeah. you reach it, you look back, you're like, oh, it was a process. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, you, and then the fact that you've ticked off all those boxes, that's just fuel for the dreams now because you're exactly. like, oh, I've done it already. So I can totally do it again. Yeah. And I also just think like in, in like my career wise, but also just like, personally I've grown in such a way that I I clearly wasn't like this nine years ago but Mm -hmm. it was things that I hadn't even thought about my that I wanted for myself that I had to like go back and check and like no 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 you like you're you're growing as a good good person you know what I mean like sure you're you're consistent and in your growth as a better person like always being a better person than you were a year ago two years ago whatever and it felt like I have, and because I have that foundation of me being, me wanting and knowing that whatever mark I leave on the earth, I want it to be, she was a good person. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, yes, career is an add-on, but like when it's just me, Mia, bare bones, like what am I? I'm not all of my career. I am still me. I bring things to my career because yep. that's an attachment of me, but like me. <clears throat> and I was like, I have a really good, I've created and still creating a really good, solid uh, foundation for myself um, Yes. to propel off of. Even when I propel and I get knocked a couple of notches back, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> some things just don't work out all the time. And that's just the business that it is. But, sure. Um, to be able to come back to the moment and the, <clears throat> the groundwork of like, no, 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 you're good. You're good. It wasn't for you. It was meant for somebody else. And yep. so let that person have it. You know what I mean? Like, don't take what's not yours because it won't be fulfilling. Like you said, it's yep. all about the fulfillment. And I just felt like, wow, it's just crazy how much growth you can do when you're pursuing your passion. And right. You are, you are, you're pursuing it in such a way that isn't about money and isn't about fame and isn't about those other things that are fickle and like fade away. And even the people that have the most of it are unhappy. It's you know? true. It was just like, yes, yes, keep doing that, that good work. Keep finding your love for yourself. Keep finding love for people because that's what breeds like humanity. And it's, and that's what makes good things happen for you. You know, it was just, yeah, it was just great. Yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. That, that was literally the entire like point of me starting this show four years ago was I love the work that people are doing. And then I want to get to know the person behind it because people are more than just their work. You know, Absolutely. and everyone yeah. has a story and yeah. I'm like, I want to hear them all. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> a million hours of podcast. <laughs> That's right, dude. My God. I just hit a hundred episodes. Uh, oh. like, oh my gosh. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was a, lot a... Of work. <sighs> Mia, listen, thank you for saying that. <laughs> that is a lot of work. I... Oh. It's, it's so yes. much work, but I mean, it's so fun, you know, cause you get to <laughs> well, right. hear these things. I mean, dude, you learn acting in the globe. I mean, that's an amazing story. So, th- yeah. so you were in Jersey city at this time when you came back from London? Uh, when I came back, I went, well, in Jersey, really in New Brunswick, that's where uh, Rutgers oh, cool. is. And then right after graduation, I moved straight to Jersey city and was just like, all right, here, here I we am. go. You know, um, and it was great. I had um, a really good kind of send off from college. We got to showcase um, acting scenes and stuff 
um, from my classmates and I to agents, managers, casting directors in New York. And so they got to see us for the first time. And I mean, they do this with basically every school does this. Every conservatory does this. Right. Like um, showcase. Yeah. Um, so it was like, okay, cool. And I had the the goal of my first year out of school. My Well, actually, my first two years, two and a half years out of school, I said to myself, no one knows who you are yet. Yep. So use these first two years to make your best impression in the room to say, hi, my name is Mia and this is what I have to offer. Yes. And not so much of Hey, I'm here. I need to be booked. Hey, I'm here. I need to be booked. Like, right. They can smell it. Just, yeah, they can smell that energy. Yep, it's um, true. And and it, and it worked in my favor, you know, just to be like, this is who I am and this is what I have to offer and I'm willing to learn and grow and do different things. But hey, it's just me. Right, <laughs> right. You're you like, know? I can contribute um, as opposed to, contribute. hey, give me something. And as opposed to... I'm better than this person. Right. No, because I'm a completely different person than somebody else. Exactly. So, everyone brings their own thing. Everyone brings their own thing. Yep. And that's something that I had to like, I have to, not continually now because I just got it now, but yeah. <laughs> in the beginning I had to continually tell myself like, no, 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 no. Nobody's better than you. It's just a, a different choice. Yep. They were looking for or you got this one because it was meant for you and they were looking exactly for you. And, and it was just like this, this like snowball effect of like more casting directors wanted to see me. And my agent was really great and happy with the work I was doing. And I was getting this and in this room and this room and to the point where I didn't book a lot of things, but I was getting such good feedback in relationships built yeah. that now most people are, are contacting my agent directly. Like, Hey, can you send me in for this? Like, there you, you know go. what I mean? Like, it's become that, and that's exactly like the vision I had for Hell myself. Hell yeah! Like, this, this is what I want. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's the way to go because that's that's the. It's a relationship. It's personal. Yeah. Like they're getting you, and they know what they need. Because it's also so fickle. You know what I mean? It could be like uh, your hair is too short. Okay, well, that's what disqualified you. You know, yeah. it's so it's like yeah. you kind of. I I've learned if you can have a healthy disassociation from it. Absolutely. You know, it's like do your best and Absolutely. then know that you could not have done better because it was your best. So there was nothing you could do to book it regardless because exactly. you did your best. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, it's a it's an industry that breeds really healthy people and personalities. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, you know, you know, <laughs> I, I when I was talking to uh, uh, Kylie, actually. Um, she was talking about the process and it goes back to what you're saying about like there's something in you, you know, that like if you can just enjoy the pursuit because that's where the fulfillment is. It's mm -hmm. like it's a race that's never going to stop. You know what I mean? It's always a struggle. But if you can endure and find joy within the process, you're you're connected. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a weird thing. And also just like taking the time to kind of like unplug from it. I'm, oh, I'm yes. big on that. And uh, same. And my agent are like, look, girl, you can't be leaving. Like, yep, <laughs> same. I'm like, guys, I won't be available. Like, I have to take some mental time. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> like, and they're like, sis, it's pilot season. Right. <laughs> You're like, yes, it's also me season. It's also me season, <laughs> and if you want me to be good in these rooms, you better let me take a couple of days to myself. Like, it's true. It's so important. Especially yeah. now, everything is so social media oriented, and it's like you yes. have to post about everything you did. I was like, I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Until it's done, until you see it on the TV, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I did do that. <laughs> exactly, and that's way more fun. You know Absolutely. what I mean? As opposed to like on set, you're like, I'm not even making the cut of this episode, <laughs> but yeah, everyone right, knows I'm right. on set. You know, I, mean, I recently had something happen where I actually booked a show, booked a, a, a co-star in the show, and it was an awesome primetime television show. Mm -hmm. Awesome work, awesome script, meaty, good, good lines. Like, nice. oh, yes, this is going to be great on the reel. Yeah. And I shot it, did it, did both of my scenes, like, within the span of two weeks, did it maybe a week or two prior to it supposed to be airing, I get an email that they had to recast my role. Oh, no. And I'm like, what? Mind you, I already told my family because I'm like, I shot this thing. Like, I told Right. Them and we were excited and everyone's like, okay, when is it? Where is it? And they had Ooh. to recast me just because like 
again, powers that be. Right. Uh, producers in LA thought I could have, I didn't look as menacing. And I've gotten that before. I don't, on paper, on a picture, I don't look mean. At right. All. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't look weathered. I don't look worn out. Like, I don't ever look like that. Even though I feel like that. <laughs> like, Are you sure? Yeah. I hear you. All, I can brood. Like, yeah, like, but I don't, I don't give that off. And so, yep. even though the work was good and I can be that character, they mm-hmm. were like, just looking wise. We need it. We need just something, somebody else that looks just a little bit more menacing, just a little bit more rough around the edges. Like they could have done the crime. Right. And I was like, what? And I got, I mean, I got a a wonderful email from the director saying like, it had nothing to do with the art. It was literally something that was not controlled by her or could not be controlled by anybody really. Like she was like, you're fantastic. I want to work with you again. But for this, they just had to do something else. And I just wanted to let you know, like reach out to you, let you know. And I was a little bit bummed. Right. But it was like, well, I booked it. You know what I mean? You did. I booked it and they had already liked me. And you killed so I'm it. I'm good. Yeah. yeah I so I'm good. And just like to unplug from the 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 balance of like rejection and, and the balance of like you can get something and then it could have a blow like that where it's just like, oh my God, I'm going to be in this. And then you're not in it. Right. Like, what do you do with that feeling? You know what I mean? It's true. It's true. I had it. I cried my way through it because yep. I was, I mean, of course. Of yeah, course. absolutely. But then I was like, the email, the email was such a good nugget for me to be like, no. You're right. Okay. You're okay. You can't make yourself look more worn. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the trauma's on the inside. Right. It's okay. It's okay. Like, you'll be fine. <laughs> sure. Oh, man. It was man. such a, uh, another moment in, like, something I had never experienced before. Right. So to have that experience now and be like, okay, this this can happen. I mean, I knew it could happen, but I just didn't think it was going to happen to me. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't like, know until you know. It happens to a lot of people, but it's never happened to me. Well, now I'm on that boat. Okay? That's right. That's right. So, like, I felt like, okay, I have this now to always have in my pocket to know that the feeling could be there. The feeling is, is valid, however you feel about it. Um, but also just like, Okay, cool. And I watched the episode, and girl, and the girl who did it did a fantastic job too. Like, right, yeah, it's <laughs> fine. Just, just watching you know it, I mean? fair. Like, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Like, right. I'm happy for her. I'm sure she was ecstatic. Like, sure. What? My episode's gonna view in two weeks, and I'm just getting it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Start running. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing, but yeah, it was just like things like that. Like, I always have to make sure that I'm unwinding and like unpacking things that are necessary for myself and not bottling up those feelings of like shame and feeling embarrassed and whatever. Who cares? Like, right. Who cares? Show goes on. I didn't. Yeah. The show goes on. Who cared that I didn't get it? If somebody is telling you like, oh, you didn't get that. That's not a real friend. It's you know true. what I mean? It's true. That's not a real friend at all. <laughs> and speaking of like great meaty roles, uh, I mean, we got to talk about Red Dead. Yes. Dude. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Listen, I Red Dead is so I'm not I'm not a big gamer because I'm terrible at video games. Um, but Red Dead was one of those that was like a transcendent experience because the narrative and the characters were so good. And mm-hmm. I just thought about it from the actor's perspective. I was like, these are every one of these are dream roles, like fully fleshed out yeah. characters that are human beings that feel and have motivation and just, oh, it's so good. Yeah. So I'm wondering, had you done performance capture before? Because it's different <laughs> than every other actor as far as the, the, the physical Never. of what you do. Never in my life. <laughs> okay. So what was, first, what was that audition like? Because everyone I've talked to had no idea what they were auditioning for for a while. So that is the absolute yep. truth. Yep. So <laughs> I went in, it was for, it was through my commercial agent. So I'm like, oh, okay. But then you think that, like, this is not a commercial. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was through my commercial agent. And so I went in and I'm just like, okay, this must be like some sort of commercial. I didn't, got, I didn't get any like breakdown or, nothing description it was just like come dress casual wow okay <laughs> yeah like, okay that's it good so job I get there and um i walk in the room and 
Well, actually, I got there, and one of the uh, uh, guys came out, and he gives me, like, a paper, just a paper that has, like, a couple, like, a paragraph on it um, of some lines. And he's like, you know, you don't have to memorize it, but, like, be familiar. Uh, And then, you know, we'll let you know when we're ready. And I'm like, "Uh, oh, okay. All right. I'm, like, reading it over, and it's, like, it's just, like, something. it, It was literally, like, Oh, a monologue about like why I didn't want to do something. Sure. Like, <laughs> but it was like supposed to be really like heartfelt and stuff. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I go in the room, I do it once over, and um, casting tells me like, okay, do it, but do it as if uh, you've been away from your family for a couple of months and the guy that you're with here, he like, he sometimes will hit you like you're on the road with him and, and you have nowhere else to turn. Ooh. And I'm like telling him, I don't want to do something. And like, they wanted, and, and all I did was like, okay, this is deep. Like, right. Okay, let me go That's to a my lot. Emotional... Yeah. And that was the only thing that they told me, but I knew it was like, okay, yeah, yeah you want me to be deeper. Okay, yeah. Cool. This is something. And he's like, and can you do it and look into the camera? Ooh. Like, Power okay. move. And I did it. And like, after I was done, I kind of like, you know, got out of it. It was just like, okay. And I like wiped my tears and I was like, okay. And they were like, wow. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See ya. I like gave him the paper and like bounced out the room. And, <laughs> yeah. and then I didn't hear anything for a good two months. Wow. Two months. And then finally I get a call from my commercial agent. She's like, hey. I'm like, hey. She's like, you know that thing you went out for that was for uh, mocap? And I was like, mm, I think so. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you booked it. And I was like, oh, awesome. That's so cool. Like, what are the details? She's like, well, I don't have them either. They didn't give them to me either. Oh, like, that's a good sign. That, yeah, it's that secret. And I was just like, oh, okay. She's like, but I'm going to send over the NDA. And they'll be in contact with you after you sign it. And I was like, all right, cool. So I get it. I sign it. The thing about NDA is no one's really reading them. Yep, and that, it's true. <laughs> it's true. No one's really reading them. No, they're pages. Reading. I shouldn't even be saying that right <laughs> yeah. now, but like, who's really reading It's a them? fact. It's a fact. <laughs> I just signed it, dated it, and sent it back. Yep, and here you go. And then I get the email of like, hi, welcome to Rockstar, blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm not a gamer. Right, I don't yeah. Know what you're talking about. <laughs> what? You're like, like the energy drink. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. Like a commercial, great. Right. Why was I crying in the audition then? That doesn't make sense, but okay. That's right, the most intense commercial (laughs) ever. (laughs) For an energy drink. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So they send me the script, and it has Tilly's name on it, and then it has, like, Arthur's name. And I'm like, I just still don't know what's going on. I don't have a character description. I still have nothing. Sure. You're like, is Arthur the guy that's hitting me? Yeah, I'm like, what? But the script that I got that day, it, it was just me talking to him. Like, nice. I mean, like you, like you see me in camp doing now. Right. Um, But it was very like, hmm? Right. <laughs> Something's What's going on going here. On? <laughs> and I'm still like, this must be a one-off. Like, oh, okay, so I'll do it for a day. Fast cool. forward <laughs> three years later. Like, Three oh. years. Yeah, I was on it for three years. I went for three years. Mm-hmm. So I was in it. I, um, I when I first got there, I was just about to get married, and nice. then throughout that, throughout the whole time I filmed, I had gotten married, I had gotten pregnant, and then I had my son. Like, dude, all of that within the time frame of me filming. You know, talk about the, transformative the, experience. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the audition had nothing, nothing to do with. I mean, it did though. Right. It did though because Tilly is so deep emotionally. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it, I, it is. But I didn't have to do that much. I wasn't doing that type of work when I was filming, and I was right. Like, Why <laughs> you guys make me do that. In the yeah, we I'm just like, wanted to, to see this it. Day, to this day, we, Mia, like one of the best auditions I've ever seen. I'm like, thanks, guys. There you go. There you go. Work the magic. Like, this makes no sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
We just wanted to make you cry to see if we you can handle it. We just to see you cry today. That's all. Yeah, Great, just, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is going to be a very long job. We need to see <laughs> what you look like when you cry because it's probably going to happen. <laughs> oh, God. Man, three years. That's, I mean, that's the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Yeah. Three, and it was so, it's so random. Like, it was just random pop ups of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So next week you'll be coming in. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then and you then leave. All right, last day. <laughs> yeah, then nothing for two months. And then like, okay, you're coming in for the whole week next week. Like, okay, cool. It was just always just like up and down, but it was such a great time getting on set and seeing people and like meeting new people that had, they had cast or like meeting the people that you've never met before, but clearly you're interacting with them in the game. Like, it was just such a community that I didn't know existed. Um, and it gave me such a an honor to be a part of a video game. Sure. Especially I just nowadays. Wasn't a part of that world at all. Right. And, but to know and then like to see the fans now and like to have you speak to them and they reach out to you and like send gifts and stuff, like it's just it's such a community of some good people. Yep, I agree. And, and I, and I'm so, I'm just so happy that I am now aware of it. I just wasn't aware before. Sure. And I didn't have the, the respect that I do now for gamers. Cause I tried to play the game that I am in. Yeah. <laughs> and no, no, nope. it, didn't, it didn't work for you. <laughs> no, nope. Cause I can really get the controller right. Right. So yeah. work on a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Your son will teach you one day. I, you know, they, he loves it. That's My so cool. Sits and he will turn on the Xbox, bring the controller. He'll bring it to me, but he knows if I turn it on, we're only sitting in the camp, sir. Because all I know how to do <laughs> is walk around the camp as Arthur. I don't know how to do anything. And like maybe chop some wood. Right. And, like, get some water from the river. Like I, chores. I don't know how to ride the horse. <laughs> I don't know how to pop the gun out. I'm not shooting anybody, robbing anybody. Right. So, like, but when my husband plays, he and my husband will sit. And my husband can play for like a good hour. Nice. And my son will sit there with him and watch. That's so cool. Isn't that amazing? And I'm not even like, no, 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 no. I'm like, yeah, this is so great. I love this. Right. Ooh, like, do it again. Do it again. Right. You're like, that's me. Like, I remember the time, though, when video games were so frowned upon. You know what I mean? Like, I remember oh, yeah. that. And I wasn't a gamer, but I remember it being like that. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. And like you said, the community that's there now because it's such a big thing i mean video games are bigger than movies sometimes absolutely you know it's crazy and when you have a story like you know red dead 2 that really connects with people uh i mean it doesn't help that the main character that you play as and get attached to gets tuberculosis i mean that's well, cool right. that's that's pretty rough <laughs> you know so you really connect <laughs> yeah. and yeah. i i just love hearing the like camaraderie you know behind the actors you know you're like absolutely. oh this like it was a job, sure, but it was also so much time spent. Like, some people, five years, and then three years. Like, that's a long time to do a job, you know? So you can't help Absolutely. but develop relationships, and, like, it comes through. It's so cool. Hi. It's so Sorry, cool. my son just walked in. So. No, you're good. Hey, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's such a, a thing. And the thing, the hardest part about being, okay, there go the toys. <laughs> Get it, get the hardest, it. The hardest part about being uh, in the game and having to keep it on under wraps was we couldn't, like, do anything with each other. Oh, right. Because there were a couple of, like, security breaches and things like that, and a couple of people had, like, not that I knew or had worked with at all, but <laughs> some things had happened where um, somehow, like, somebody's email had maybe gotten it. Like, it was, like, some oh, no. stuff, like, we had to like keep changing our passwords for our emails, like stuff like that. Was sure. Happening. So it was super like you got. I know you guys love each other to death, but you can you just cannot hang out and like post pictures. And if you do hang out, you cannot post pictures of it or it say anything about it because like fans will follow and like put one and the other together and be like, okay, this person must be with this person and that person. And before the game was coming out, it kind of was happening. Like right, I think I want to say like a month before. Mm -hmm. it kind of was happening where people we started to get like random followers just like really really random followers uh -oh. <laughs> and we would go to their pages and it would be like avid gamer or something like that or something about a video game in their bio and we was like oh 
They're on to you. They're on to us, right? And it was like extra measures, extra precaution. But it sucked because we couldn't hang out like we wanted to. But once that game came out, oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> You're yeah, all like, we're, we live together house, now. Like, what, we are, <laughs> what we were all the time, which is like, I talked to Kylie. I talked to Sam, who plays Mary Beth. I yes. talked to Joe, who plays Karen, like all the time. We have a group chat. I we love talk it. all the time. We do a lot of things together. We go to dinner together. They babysat my son um, for me when I was going to auditions or like, We'll have like just get togethers. It's just like a family thing. Yeah. Where we didn't realize that something like this could create that type of bond because a lot of people are on TV shows that run forever, you know? Yeah, it's true. And they don't create this type of bond where it's not about like who's better than who or who did more work than the other person or who's a main character who's not. It was really like we really are invested in this game. Really right. Love the product that we're putting out. Really love the work that we're doing. Um, and because we all have the respect of the art that we're doing, it wasn't like, oh, we're just in a video game. It was like, we're we're in motion capture. Like we're actually doing acting work. Right. You know, not just in the booth. Sure. I mean, sometimes you have to go back and like revamp a couple of lines or something but like when most of the work that people see in the game is us actually acting those things out you know yeah that's so cool and i love to hear that it's like so much work you know it's like theater absolutely it was like it was like the hybrid of theater television and film like mixed in one yeah and it was such a a new like it's such a new medium that i feel like is gonna be it's it is fulfilling to the artist because it's not just voiceover acting. Right, it's the, the full body is doing it, and we love that. Yeah, you can really get yeah. into it and mm-hmm. like feel it and be mm-hmm. the character. Absolutely. That's so cool. That is pretty nuts. That like the people are. I mean, because Red Dead the first one was such a phenomenon that Absolutely, it's yeah. it's kind of. I mean, it's sad, but also kind of funny to think that like Ben Davis can't go anywhere. You're like if he if At he's all. anywhere near a mocap stage, we're like Dutch. What you have to, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> you know how you doing? You got a plan? You got a plan? Yeah, right. <laughs> he's like, no, no plans, no plans. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Do you? So do you have? Uh, I mean, three years is a long time. Do you have a favorite scene that you got to do or something? Um, I want to say I have two. Okay. So the one where I was uh, kidnapped Ooh, by nice. the Foreman, Foreman Brothers gang. Yep. And Arthur and Susan come to find me, come to get me. That was the one scene where I was like, oh, Tilly's got some power, man. Like, yeah. Just for her to be vulnerable when Arthur like unties Hi. her and and takes the gag out of her mouth and like she's there with him and she's like I thought I was you know I thought I was a goner basically and then when it's like Arthur and Susan's like we're gonna go get him and I like snap right into like okay cool and I got my gun and when he comes back I'm shooting him on sight yeah like, you know what I mean I <laughs> get love it. love that I love that that was such a fun scene to do um and then the second my second scene is kind of because so People have played it. It's been the year. Yep. So, like, yeah, it's been it's time. Spoiler. Come on, guys. Play it. You have played it. It's been a year. Yeah. Um, it's when in the epilogue, uh, oh, yeah. John, John Marston, he sees me. He finds me on getting on the train, and I'm pregnant. In an actual mocap, I was pregnant. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I was pregnant during that scene where he finds me, and I tell him, like, I met a lawyer and I'm married and and I'm happy and all of that. I was, a, I think I was like seven, six or seven months pregnant when we did that. What? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, after we were done, I was like, did you guys do this for me? Like, and they're like <laughs> we love you, but no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they legally had to say that, but I can yeah. tell you for a fact they did. Um, but they did. They yeah. did. I was like, what? She's pregnant? So like how I'm walking in the scene is literally how I was walking in real life, like waddling everywhere. Cause I was so pregnant. <laughs> that's was, amazing. My, that's my second favorite scene. Yeah, that is. That's fair. I mean, your son's in the game too. Look at that. He's in the game. You did it. And you're married to a lawyer. It all comes back around. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> 
I'm here to help put these threads together of your life, and look at that one. <laughs> you weren't meant to be a lawyer. You were meant to fictionally marry one. <laughs> yes, absolutely. There we go. That's right. Full <laughs> circles. Full circles. Oh, man. That's that's amazing, though. And then after the release, I mean, a phenomenon. It's a phenomenon. It's one of the biggest games of all time ever. Uh, pretty cool. Just, yeah. Pretty cool. It's just, and I'm like, how did I get a part of this? Yeah. How did I get a part? What in the world? It's the crying. You did it. You you it's you broke it down. It's the crying when I was also a kid that yep. has like yeah. <laughs> life imitating art. That's know? right. It's the crying and the trauma. <laughs> it finally came back to you. <laughs> in that one room. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mia Davis, use it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, that's amazing. Well, I mean, we've been talking for an hour already. Look at that. Yes. Boom. This was super fun. Yes, it was. I was so, I'm so happy that this has happened. <laughs> yeah, we made it work. I mean, scheduling is, podcasting is scheduling, you know, and yeah, it happened. Yeah. So uh, uh, I'm going to stop using all your time. But before I let you go, I have to ask, where can people find you online? Um, You can find me online. Um, Instagram, I am at Mia Davis, M-E-E-Y-A-D-A-V-I-S. On Twitter, I'm at Mia Davis, again. And on Facebook, um, I'm Mia Davis Glover on Facebook. And you can go ahead and follow my page and everything like that and shout me out and send me good messages. Only the good messages, please. Yeah, if you don't mind. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And if you go away for a few weeks, it's all part of the plan. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This was great. Thanks for everything. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.